We'll turn now to our senior correspondent, Catherine Norris Trent, who is on the ground in Afghanistan. Thanks for joining us, Catherine. You are in Thank the city you, of Kandahar now, where the situation is much different than what we've seen in Kabul over the past few weeks. How do you see Taliban governance there? Yes, we are in Kandahar, which is a city in the south of Af Afghanistan, and it is a historic bastion of the Taliban. It's where the movement emerged, and it was their de facto capital in the 1990s, the first time they were in power. So it's very socially conservative and a very different picture here than in the capital, uh, Kabul, as you can imagine. Uh, we went out into some of the rural areas of this province as well. In fact, we went to the madrasa where Mullah Omar, the former emir of the Taliban in the 1990s, founded the movement and started recruiting Taliban fighters. And people there in those villages, in those surrounding areas, still venerate him. They tell us they're happy the Taliban are back in power, that they agree with the very socially conservative measures they've put in place, the restrictions uh, on various parts of the population. You know, it's very rare in those rural areas to see women outside. Even here in the city of Kandahar, they're few and far between compared to before the Taliban swept to power. And all those women who do venture out are wearing the, the fully covering uh, burqa. So it, it's difficult for them. They've been talking to us about their fears. Some of them trying to continue studying in private universities. But here, as in the rest of Afghanistan, girls are only allowed to go to school up to sixth grade around the age of 12. And after that, for the moment, education for girls is finished. So people really hoping that situation will change. Um, it has to be said, though, that here in the city of Kandahar, we have spoken to people off camera who are not 100 percent happy with the Taliban coming back to power despite this being the region, the birthplace of that Taliban movement. People here have suffered over the past 20 years of war, decades of war. Uh, many of them here have lost loved ones in bomb blasts perpetrated by the Taliban. So off camera, they're telling us that they're not at all happy about seeing the Taliban in power. On camera, impossible to get them to talk about that because there's a lot of fear here too, fear of reprisal killings. And there have been accounts of those, especially down here in the south. Catherine, that off and on camera difference between how people describe Taliban rule there, I think also perhaps applies to the Taliban itself. It's embarked upon somewhat of a public relations mission, trying to kind of soften its image abroad. With that in mind, what has it been like to cover them as a journalist in Afghanistan in recent weeks? Well, it's a really interesting exercise because the Taliban clearly are accepting foreign journalists in. They're issuing permits for us to work. We don't have a minder with us, I should add, at all times. Um, they want to try and portray an image of themselves as the legitimate rulers of the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, as they have renamed this country. And they're constantly calling for more international help. They're calling for uh, their, their assets to be unfrozen by the international national community and to get money and aid workers coming back into this country. So this is clearly what they want to get across in this communications exercise. But at the same time, they're very touchy about certain issues, notably about women's rights. When we arrived, we were briefed that we were not allowed to film any unauthorized protests. And, you know, that clearly means that the, the women's marches, which there have been a few of, of women coming out onto the streets, uh, holding banners, asking for their rights. Those are off limits to journalists. In fact, the Taliban tell them that if you're filming these unauthorized protests, you could get your uh, TV cameras and equipment confiscated. We're not allowed to film military bases as well. So, you know, there are things that they are extremely sensitive about. It's a balancing act for them. But at the moment, they're deciding they want to try and get their message across. For Afghan journalists, let me just add, it is a very different picture. A lot of them are living in fear, living in fear of being hunted down and, again, of being the victims of reprisal attacks. All right. Catherine Norris-Trent, thank you so much for that update.